We've looked at the concept of knowledge in a number of ways in other videos, from philosophical and psychological conceptions of knowledge to a continuum that places knowledge as a human endpoint after data and information. In this video, we will look at another important conceptualization of knowledge, one that has an influence on how our students understand knowledge and how they then choose or not, to deal with it. Psychological knowledge can be categorised into a number of types. Explicit knowledge is a type that can be formalised in language, stored and then transmitted to other people. When you have an ability to demonstrate your explicit knowledge, we call this declarative knowledge. Explicit knowledge is contrasted with tacit knowledge, which is a demonstrable skill that is difficult to put into words. I can play a musical instrument proficiently and can tell you about that, a declarative skill, but I can't transfer that procedural skill to you. Another way of expressing this distinction is into know that and know how. I know that I can play music and I know how to play. These are different forms of psychological knowledge. I play recorder, by the way. My undergraduate degree is in recorder performance and teaching. The know that and know how can be further divided. For example, know that includes know why for scientific processes and know-how may also include know-who, that is, who I can communicate with or who has information that I can use. But fundamentally, the distinction rests on declarative knowledge being based on facts and procedural knowledge being based on practical abilities. What do these mean for epistemic cognition in the classroom? Quite a lot, it turns out. Epistemic cognition considers how students conceive issues of truth and justification in their knowledge building. But if students don't consider certain types of knowledge as being knowledge, the risk is that they won't develop knowledge structures around what they genuinely have. Alternatively, they may ignore valid types of knowledge in the false belief that these won't be useful to them. Either way, students development is curtailed. Let's take an example, bearing in mind that in this discussion the interplay between psychological and philosophical definitions of knowledge is a crucial subtext. A common belief held by naive thinkers is that subjective knowledge, that is knowledge held in a single person, is not generalizable and is therefore not a valid form of knowledge. In my own EFL classes, I often see students who would rather study bilingual word lists of English than practice using them. Indeed, the publishing and testing industries in Japan promote this attitude. Furthermore, in some institutions, classes that aim to practice English skill development, procedural knowledge, get lower grade credits than so-called content classes that teach declarative knowledge. It's no wonder that students acquire the belief that it, knowing that is better than knowing how. If institutions do not reward know-how in the form of better and more appropriate testing and grade credits and continue to encourage know-that beliefs, there is no wonder that naive thinkers will not prioritise or even consider other forms of knowledge as being valid. Another clear but more contentious example of this is seen in some religious thinkers. Their belief that their religion is the only true one stops them from even considering the validity of other forms of religious or spiritual knowledge. In epistemic cognitive terms, students who do not have the procedural ability to, for example, conduct a values-based evaluation are also not able to see how evaluatory processes influence the creation of philosophical knowledge. In other words, some students do not recognise that all knowledge is, in some way, grounded in human action and has been created by human agents for human purposes. 
So such students do not see the underlying values inherent in the knowledge creation process and this deficiency inhibits their development of a more robust knowledge structure. A simpler way of putting this is, if students can't do something, it's likely that they can't see it. It's not only about know that. Know how is also vital, especially in practical epistemic terms.